so one of the things we use present perfect for is an indefinite past indefinite past so what does that mean that means we can use um, present perfect to talk about something that happened in the past um, and um, may continue into the present, but in general, it started in the past, okay? So, um, but maybe when we talk about using it in this form, this indefinite past, indefinite means it's not um, specific. So we can say things like, the restaurant has closed, okay? Or we've been to France, okay? It's something that happened in the past, but not, we're not talking about a specific um, experience or a specific event attached to a specific time. Does that make sense? So let's read through some of these rules here and see if we can get a little more clear on this. So number one, it says you can use the present perfect to talk about something that happened in the past and maybe you aren't sure when, okay? So if you say, okay, we've been to France, it's kind of just saying it's something that you have done. You're not talking about, you know, one specific time that you were there, okay? So uh, I've been to France is kind of just something in my past, okay? Um, and it's not a definite time. So it's an indefinite past, okay? The restaurant has closed. So it does not open anymore. Maybe the business stopped. Um, and so we can say the restaurant has closed. I'm not sure when, uh, maybe two weeks ago, maybe five years ago, we're not sure, uh, but the restaurant has closed, okay? It's very similar in meaning to doing a simple pass. So just saying the restaurant's closed, it closed. So let's take a look also at these adverbs of time. So how can we use this to give a little more specifics to this tense? So for example, you can use the adverbs of time with the indefinite past. So what's an adverb of time? Okay, so when we talk about things that have happened repeatedly, okay, repeatedly, we say, I have been to France twice, okay? I have been to France often. I have been to France many times, okay? Those are all things that we could very easily put in this sentence. Another way that we can use this is saying so far, so far, okay? So, so far they have visited Thailand six times. So you're kind of counting in this, in this example. So far, they've been to Thailand six times. It kind of, it also implies that it's possible that they're going to go back to Thailand, okay? So far, they've been to Thailand six times. I don't know, maybe they will go again next year or this year. So then here's a little note here. When you ask questions, or you need to give a negative answer. So if the question is, have you ever been to Indonesia? I like to travel, so we're using a lot of travel questions, okay? Have you ever been to Indonesia? So then you hear in the question, have you ever been? We, talk, we use this very often. Have you ever been? So you're just inserting this word ever in there, okay? So it's in a question. Have you ever been to Indonesia? is the same question as, have you been to Indonesia, okay? So really it's, it's no different, but you will hear this a lot, especially in American English, okay? Um, and then the answer here, so here's your question, right? Your question, have you ever been to Indonesia? And then your answer is no, I've, I've never been there. And there, what are we talking about? Right, so we're just using that as kind of like a pronoun. Okay, so have you been there? Where is that? It's Indonesia. I've never been there, but I'd love to go. I'd love to go. This is that conditional tense. This means I would, okay? I would love to go. Awesome, okay, so let's